There are many reasons why I believe the topic of cosmology and a flat earth matters. It destroys the false theory of evolution. It points people to a creator. It reveals that the Bible is literally true in a sense that honestly, most if not all of us did not previously realize. But beyond all this, the revelation and rediscovery of the original biblical cosmology in current times, these last days, serves another very interesting purpose, I believe. A very poignant and powerful eschatological purpose. Because unlike virtually all other modern attempts to defend creationism, debunk evolution, or expose the satanic deceptions of this fallen worldly system, the difference here is that it takes you all the way back to square one. All the way back to questioning practically everything you were taught in your government-backed education. Questioning everything you grew up being programmed to believe through the television. Questioning almost everything you thought you knew about the cosmos and the history of mankind. But the thing that increasingly fascinates me about the Flat Earth issue is how it provokes such a violent reaction in people. Not just people who are atheists and evolutionists, but from Christians. And not just any Christians, but even Christians who specialize in teaching on eschatology and researching Bible prophecy. Christian teachers whose entire ministries whose entire careers, basically, have in many regards centered around warning people about the mark of the beast system, which the Bible prophesies about in the book of Revelation, and we can see being rapidly constructed all around us right now. They talk about the mark of the beast, how it might actually be connected to Genesis 6 and have some genetic component, uh, the transhumanist agenda, the alien deception, UFOs, underground government hybrid programs, the technological singularity, artificial intelligence, and on and on and on. But at the end of the day, no matter how compelling much of this research and its possible connections to the coming B system might be, the ultimate takeaway is still the same. The practical implications for us are still incredibly simple and unchanging. Don't take the mark. Even Christians who were living in the first century, the days of the early church, who, who read those words shortly after John the Revelator penned them, they were able to comprehend that much despite how far in the future the fulfillment of those words might still have been. But this is what is so strange, so incomprehensible when it comes to so many of our alleged watchmen on the wall today, these harbingers of prophetic fulfillment in these final perilous days. They write books and make DVDs and give lectures talking about almost every conceivable conspiratorial topic from pyramids on Mars, to the hollow earth, to the Pope's statements about aliens, trying to decipher it all through the lens of Bible prophecy. But when it comes to the idea that the earth could be flat, stationary, and enclosed within a firmament, just as the Bible describes, and as they all admit the ancient Hebrew authors of the Bible all believed, suddenly that topic is crazy, considered pure madness, declared as unscientific, and written off as foolishness. Suddenly, the men and women who supposedly are on the cutting edge of discerning the signs of the times, and avoiding the pitfalls of what the Bible calls the Great Deception, they can't fathom the idea that the enemy of men's souls would possibly be able to pull off a lie about something as fundamental as the earth itself or the heavens above. 
suddenly we see them resorting to the same mockery that atheists aim at creationism. We see them appealing to the wisdom of this fallen and deceived world to try and justify themselves. And suddenly, in all of this clamor and division and controversy, we see something being revealed that we did not quite appreciate before. We start to see just how deep this idolatrous relationship goes between the modern Christian church and the satanic systems of this world. We realize how in so many ways we've continued to try to point to the Bible as the source of inspired truth, but at the same time try to find some way to make it agree with and validated by human wisdom. And just like touching a raw exposed nerve, the flat earth controversy cuts deep at this idolatry and pokes it right at its most sensitive point. And this is how I see this last day's realization, this end times rediscovery, as being a true gift from above, even if most of the church is too stubborn to accept it. Because truly, if you are too afraid to even honestly investigate something right now, even while the world teaches that it's sheer idiocy, that it's absolutely insane and something to be ridiculed and scorned, then how on earth do you seriously think you are going to fare when it finally does come time to make the decision to effectively walk away from every luxury of the civilized modern world in order to refuse to take the mark of the beast? What good will all your research about transhumanism and microchips and genetic hybrids and everything else be if you can't even handle being ridiculed for believing the Bible over the opinions of men? Because when those days finally do come, do you not realize that being mocked or looking stupid in the eyes of the world will be the very least of what you will have to endure in order to not compromise your very soul? Do you not think it will be regarded as the utmost insanity to even consider opting out of the Antichrist's promises of a technological utopia? Do you not think that you will have to resist the pleas of your own family members to just be sensible and do what you need to do to survive? Do you not know that you will face scorn of entire church congregations and pastors who will have chosen to join the system rather than close their doors? Do you not realize that you will have to live by faith in a way that you and I have never really had to do for our entire comfortable modern lives? Relying on God alone to provide our basic needs, not knowing where the next meal might come from, not being able to get a paying job, not being able to buy or sell? Do you not understand that most of the people you know will think you are absolutely mad that you've turned into some fundamentalist religious quack if you actually leave all the conveniences of modern living behind simply because you won't just take some little mark? Why do you suppose that you will stand firm in the faith against all the pressures of that system, against all the ridicule, against all the hatred, against being treated like a terrorist and a criminal, even to stand in the face of your life being taken from you if you do not renounce Christ?
if already right now you are too afraid of looking stupid